Hello, BookTube. It's Friday, and it's time for Friday Reads. Uh, I've attempted this several times. This is going to be the last time if my breathing is not the greatest today. So I'll try to do this uh, short and sweet, uh, as short as possible. Uh, uh, last week I had started on last Friday... Uh, E.R. Braithwaite's To Serve With Love, uh, 1959 sort of autobiographical novel, uh, which later uh, was done in 1967. Uh, film To Serve With Love with Sidney Poitier, uh, Lulu, Judy uh, Gieson, and others, uh, directed by James Clavell. I've done a comparison of this uh, uh, film uh, book to film if anybody's interested uh, and then I went on to a 1935 novel by uh, B. Traven called Treasure of the Sierra Madre uh, it was originally published as say at 35 by uh, Alfred A. Knopf yeah uh, and this is a 19, uh, sorry, 2020 edition by Picador never read the book I but I have done it's uh, very enjoyable it's set in uh, uh, basically post-war 1920 ish um, uh, Mexico uh, where there's a trio uh, are prospecting uh, looking and finding gold and their sort of descent uh, or a few descent into madness and greed and paranoia and death uh, with lots of adventures along the way. Uh, in 1948, it was done into film, directed uh, by uh, John Huston. John Huston did the screenplay uh, with Humphrey Bogart, uh, uh, Walter Huston, and uh, Tim Holt as the three main characters. Uh, fabulous film. I still have a few... Uh, extras to uh, to watch, uh, particularly uh, the commentary, and I hope to have a film up, uh, the book to film, um, possibly Sunday or Monday uh, for this. Um, and but th about a third of the way through uh, of this, I'd stopped reading uh, for the moment. I paused in order to uh, to uh, start uh, on Sunday, last Sunday. Uh, Bride's Head Revisited by Evelyn Waugh, 1945 novel. Full title is Bride's Head Revisited, The Sacred and Profane Memoirs of Captain Charles Ryder. Uh, one of my favorite books. Uh, I've, this is the third reading of it, so because it sort of snuck up on me. Um, it's a read-along uh, with Steve Donahue and Matthew at Mayberry Book Club. Uh, and their first video for the first quarter went up past Sunday. So I was a bit behind. So I read as quickly as I could uh, the first quarter. And at the same time, I was starting uh, Niall's Saga. That's a sag along, a read along for Icelandic sagas, a uh, big booktube event. Uh, and in January, I was asked to be one of the hosts, uh, which I was thrilled at that. Uh, I said yes, went and purchased a copy. Uh, and then I proceeded to, uh, well, life got in the way with heart attack and, uh, well, anyway, and, you know, everybody knows. Uh, and so... Uh, with my sort of brain not working that well from the COVID uh, leftovers, uh, I figured I couldn't do it well. And I'm, I'm, I started reading again in, in, in March, but uh, I, it's not up to doing a host for this. I'm struggling uh, reading this because of the lineage and trying to keep track of characters, who's related to who and who's done what to who. Uh but I've, I think I'm up to scratch with the 40, first 40 chapters, so I'm happy with that. It's enjoyable so far. 
Uh, so I proceeded to finish Treasure of the Sierra Madre, and then I started A.P. Herbert's House uh, by the River, The House by the River. It was published in 1921. Uh, it's set in London along the Thames, uh, sort of a small, close-knit street community, uh, quite wealthy, and uh, one of them murders uh, his maid and enlists uh, the help of a friend to uh, uh, sort of dispose of the body. Uh, there's no, it's, it's, it's a murder, but not, I wouldn't call it a murder mystery, a murder thriller, I suppose, because it's more not about the finding who's done it. We know who's done it or who, who did it. Uh, it's more the effect of it on him, um, his family, his wife, and the community and the friend who helps. Um, it was quite interesting, um, but the reason for this read, uh, reading was uh, Fritz Lang's 1950, yeah, 1950 House by the River uh, with uh, Lewis Hayward, Lee Bowman, and Jane Wyatt. Uh, it's a novel by, uh, sorry, a film. A film by Fritz Lang that I had never seen, so this would be uh, a joy, and uh, I'll get to that probably late in the week. Uh, I'm I'm going to slow down on those a little bit. Probably uh, depends on how this week's reading goes. Uh, I might slow down a bit and do one film a week because I'm going to have other readings I think in between, just to sort of uh, spice things up. It's still fiction. Uh, this is Berlin Alexanderplatz. I'm going to start. Uh, Alfred uh, Doblin. Uh, it was written in 1929. It's a Berlin novel. And the back here uh, says, uh, Franz Biberkoff is back on the streets of Berlin, determined to go straight after a stint in prison for doing some stupid stuff. He finds himself thwarted by an external agency that looks an awful like fate. Cheated, humiliated, thrown from a moving car, and embroiled in an underworld of pimps, thugs, drugs, and prostitutes. France picks himself up over and over again, until one day he is struck a bolt blow, which might just prove his downfall. A dazzling, freewheeling collage of newspaper reports, biblical stories, drinking songs, and urban slang. Berlin Alexanderplatz is the great novel of Berlin life. It's something I've wanted to read for quite a few decades. Uh, there was a TV series uh, done, on, uh, and I, I believe I watched it at the time, or part of it. Uh, I don't have that on. I think it's available DVD or probably Blu-ray. Uh, it is something that I can tie in with this, but I picked up a number of Berlin sort of era 20s novels. Um, a while back. Uh, I also have Christopher Isherwood's Berlin novels. There's two of them. Uh, they're together in a in a book. Uh, one is Mr. Mr. Someone uh, Meets the Train. I can't remember the, the character's name. And uh, um, Goodbye Berlin. Um, there's, uh, there's one here. Sorry if I can reach it. I've no less on it. Um, another very, very short novel uh, by a uh, f woman author. This might be it. Yeah, that's it. Uh, Ermgard Klune, The Artificial Silk Girl. Very small. It's like a hundred and more of less than 150 pages a novelette really uh, and this was written uh, in 1932 uh, uh, but yeah and I got another one by Thomas Mann I can't think of the, the title at the moment it's not here it's uh, in the sort of other room on the other side of this these bookcases uh so yeah, so I I thought I'd 
read some uh, Berlin 20s novels. Uh, I, I do want to get into a few things like that. It's a exploration that I've, I've wanted to do for a while is 20s Berlin, Weimar Berlin, uh, 20s Paris, uh, and I could extend it easy to 20s London, uh, 20s New York, 20s Chicago, and if there are any sort of memoirs, uh, well, there's memoirs for Hollywood, but it would be interesting to see if there's any novels that were written um, sort of at the time or shortly after of people who sort of were in Hollywood. Uh, so if anybody knows of anything like that, um, I haven't really uh, delved too much into it at this point, uh, but especially memoirs of authors that were living in Berlin in the 20s. I'm uh, definitely interested in that. I've got a list of to read and reread some uh, for Paris. But yeah, um, and, or if anybody's read Alexander, um, or sorry, uh, Berlin Alexander Platz, uh, I'd love to hear. But anyway, I think I'll end it there and have a good re reading weekend, Booktube, and uh, a week, and I'll see you next time. Thank you. Bye.